year, or kids' dangerously easy access to illegal handguns. And the face of the teen population is increasingly diverse. In Iowa's largest city, the minority population is growing at rates as much as six times that of whites. There are haves and there are have nots. And then there is North High School. We've got kids from Vietnam, we've got kids from Liberia, Tanzania, the Sudan, Ivory Coast, Philippines. This school, this team could show America something about coming together as a family. My name is Sean Quinlan, and I'm the head football coach at North High School. All right, all right, hey, bring it in. Yeah. 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 Roughly 1,380 students. 28 different languages are spoken in our hallways. 44 different ethnicities. Set, ready, go. We are the poorest school in the state of Iowa. 88% of our kids live below the poverty line. So that means a lot of our kids come to school hungry and go home hungry every night. And that's just, that's a fact. How bad you want it, baby? Drive, drive, stay low, get. It's not for the meek and timid. You better be bringing it because these kids, Let's go! they want to be loved. They yearn for hope. How do we get them to find out what's in their heart? What makes them cry? What makes them laugh? You got to get to know who they are. My name is Devin King. I'm a senior at North High. Football saved me from being six feet under or in jail somewhere. Devin, back up! At first, I'm like, you know, who is this white guy? You know, I don't care about this guy. He's just, you know, another coach that thinks they're going to tell us what to do. Devin King, unbelievable energy. Uh, didn't know how to harness it. He's got a temper. Okay, Devin will fight, drop of a hat. My father, he was in and out of jail. My mom abused me. She just couldn't stop and she kept hitting me and kept hitting me. For me to fight, it was like a way out, you know? Like I couldn't let someone just hit me anymore. You know, I had to do the hitting. I did not live at home at all. I was staying with good friends, you know, from couch to couch. Just walking around with this big old duffel bag of clothes. I remember one time, Thanksgiving, I actually didn't have nowhere to go. I was at McDonald's, like, washed myself up in McDonald's and brushed my teeth. I started gangbanging. I started doing lots of stuff I wasn't proud of. I used to always, you know, have a gun. I used to take it everywhere. I can't get cornered. I'm going to have to shoot back if I have to. I went to two combat tours to Iraq, and I uh, was selected to lieutenant colonel. And today's just a special day. Anytime we can promote a Marine, it's a big day. The Marine Corps got my best. And a lot of time, my family got what was left over. And um, I had to make a decision. We didn't have Sean home for a lot of holidays. Uh, we didn't have him home for birthdays. Our two daughters played basketball, and he had to miss a lot of those games. And that was difficult. The girls missed his presence there. And I was excited that Owen might be able to have that. My son was getting older. My pride said, uh, stay in the Marine Corps. And uh, my heart said, get out. Oh, what's going on in the Middle East? You might want to tell me. A job opened up here at North High School for the Marine Corps Junior ROTC. So I taught for two years before I took the football job. I've been with them for three years. First year, we didn't win any games. And we were beaten by an average of 55 points a game. Come on. We're not out of it yet, buddy. Come on, let's go. You Last year, we won one game, but uh, humility is the foundation of excellence. You hold your head up high. That's what we do. Quit looking at that scoreboard. The scoreboard I want to see is 5 and 10 and 15 years from now, when you become the leaders of this community. When you become He's put mindsets and different things in my head that I never thought I can see like where do I want to go in life you know what kind of man I want to be what does yeah. it do get mad yeah. this is about life yeah you quit now we quit in life yeah I could have lost my life just by trying to fight for my gang you know I stopped gang banging I threw a Glock 49 I threw it into the river by me having this gun is going to set me up to shoot someone or for a failure so I said why have it 
This past summer, three days before football season start, I didn't have nowhere to live. So I came over here, actually, and I cried uh, to Coach Quinlan. Lo and behold, our quarterback from last year was standing right there when Devin was crying, telling us the story. He said, Coach, I'll take him in. Hey, guys. Uh, How are you doing? Good. How are you? Uh -huh. Top school. It was good. It was, it was long. good. It was long. Crazy, Three days before school started, I moved in, and I got pretty emotional. I had my own bed. I still have the video. I got my own bed. My own bed. For me to have my clothes in a drawer, it was something, like, significant to me. Like, it was something, like... Even talking about it gives me the chills because I was like, I don't have to carry it in this duffel bag anymore. Hey, there comes a time in your life when you got to stand up for who you are and what you represent. They come from all corners of the globe. All these cultures getting along and playing together for one common kind of goal. Let's go! Let's go! My name is Laka Brutu. First name L-A-H-K, middle name B-R-U, last name H-T-O-O, Laka Brutu. I was born in a refugee camp in Thailand. I moved to America when I was seven or eight years old. I didn't know anything about football, nothing. I joined football because I was overweight. Go! He had the lineman size and he had the work ethic. Go! So we went to work. On the hop, on the hop, let's go! He motivated me a lot to be better than who I am, to work for something I believe in. Originally, my parents lived uh, in Burma because of the civil war that was going on over there. They couldn't stay because they burned the house down, they burned the whole village down. My dad worked about nine or ten hour a day, every day. He cut meat. He came back two or three in the morning every day. He's working for me. He's working to provide something for my family. It's a blessing to have a dad like that. All seniors with their parents, please go to the southwest corner of the football stadium. All seniors with their parents. I think my mom and my sister might be there because my dad go to work. Next up, we have La Cab Ruchu. He's working butt off like every day. He's hustling every day. I can't ask for much more than that. I just can't. You see, I know what makes you cry. And I know what makes you happy. And I know what's in your heart. Devin, where are you at? This is about you. When no one would take you in, but who took you in? The family here. The family took you in. This is about family. I want to succeed in life and be successful to be the best I can be, to show him that what he did for me and what he did for my teammates, you know, is going to benefit. I've learned a lot here. I've grew a lot here. Connection between me and Coach, oh, like a father and son. I love you, man. He was there when my father couldn't be there. He's there to watch over me. Your dad should be awful proud of you, because I'm proud of you. It's love, man. It's just love. Sean's not just coaching. He's also mentoring. So it, it entails a lot more than, than just showing up for practice and game day. No it's 12 Three. months a year. The rush is on. Trying to find balance is hard. Toll that it takes, personally, family time. Owen was getting ready to go into high school, and he would be playing football as well, and he too would have games, and you can only be one place at one time. The reason I wanted to coach football, men, is because I was a U.S. Marine, and I love leading men, okay? I led men in battle. In the camaraderie that I have seen here in the last three years, okay, I'm going to miss. I will not be your head football coach next year. My son's like you guys. He's a young man going into high school, going to play a little football, going to play a little baseball. I owe it to my son to spend more time with him. And uh, that was the reason I got out of the Marine Corps. It was because of my family. 
And you guys are always my family. You know you can come to me at any time. I want to cry, but I understand, like, you know, that's good for him to be like, oh, you know, I want to be involved in my son's life. It's not fair for me to not see my kids grow up. This is hard, man. Me either, man. You got to take care of family first. So you won't regret it later in life. Yes, man. Hey, I'm going to miss you, too. That's what he's doing, and I respect okay, that. Man. Love you, man. They don't reach everybody. That's just the reality. Alante. You know, I believed in you, right? But if we reach one, I won. That's how I look at it. You know I love you, man. All the things that you etched on the souls of these young men, they continue. And that's a beautiful thing. One, three, one, family, one, no. Tell me on three. One, two, three, family. Next, what's it like to be married to football? And what one youngster actually did to win permission to play football. And he brings down that index card, and I look at it and I think, did I sign that? Yeah, I did sign that. That's still to come on this Outside the Lines primetime.